Hello and welcome to our talk to become one, one becomes two, attacking and protecting two factor authentication. We're happy to be here, even if virtually in Password Con 2020. Great being here. And uh, my name is uh, Tal Beeri, and I'm a co founder for uh, Zengo, developing a secure and easy uh, cryptocurrency wallet. And I'm Alex, I'm a security and blockchain researcher at Zengo. Yeah, and as I said, Zengo, we're a startup, uh, VC back, we're doing an easy and secure crypto experience from the mobile device. And soon you'll find out how it's all connected to uh, two factor authentication, the topic of this talk. So, what are we going to talk about today? We'll start with a very brief intro to two factor authentication universal second factor U2F and web authentication, motivation and how it works. Then we would explain why hardware solution are not solving it all because of confidentiality, availability and user experience issues. And then we will connect as promised the, the world of crypto wallet and two factor authentication and show you how the way we solved this very similar issue uh, with cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, very hot right now, uh, and apply these solutions to the field of two factor authentication and universal second factor U2F. And we'll conclude with some next steps and questions and answers. So let's start in the beginning the motivation. Uh, the, as you all know, you're here in password.com. There are many security issues related to passwords. And uh, in fact, uh, passwords are to blame in many of uh, the breaches, as it, every report, security report uh, mentioned, for example, Verizon's report from this year. And one of the biggest problem is, uh, with password is that humans are not uh, very good with secrets. We're, not good in generating secrets. We generate guessable passwords. We tend to reuse passwords. And we're not good in protecting this secret. For example, if we are presented with a phishing website uh, masquerading as the real one, there is a good chance that we will be uh, indeed tricked and uh, will give in our uh, password to this uh, masquerading site. So to solve that, we might want to replace uh, humans with machines. Uh, and because machines are better than humans with secrets, they're better in generating them because they can generate a very long random key for each site and they're not getting tired out of it and, not to, and, and do not reuse the same key for uh, different sites. They're betting in protecting them. They're not confused by visually similar sites and they know how to do uh, crypto so they can use other protocols uh, in order to uh, defend against other attacks, for example, men in the middle. Additionally, uh, as computer know how to do crypto, we can use public key cryptography and using private and public key, we can uh, give this, as a user, give the, the service we're going to, talk to, to authenticate to only our public key, just public information, and not surrender some secret information to it, such as our password. And finally, private key can be stored on different hardware to reduce malware-based base theft. And notice that we counted quite a few uh, benefits uh, for uh, uh, doing authentication with machines and not humans. And only in the last bullet, it, we mentioned hardware because every other aspect of it is completely, uh, can be completely implemented either in software or in hardware. And, but to uh, enable all of this goodness and put it to work, uh, machines require standards because as humans just give us a text box and write password, uh, buy it and we'll know what to do. But uh, machines require some uh, better standards than that. And luckily with standards, there are so many of them, but the important ones are uh, web authentication that standardize the uh, interface uh, between web applications and the client, uh, uh, usually they call it web application relying party, as you see in the uh, diagram uh, below, and also 
and there's the universal second factor U2F and that standardized the interface between uh, two-factor authentication and uh, the client, the computer and the browser. So with these standards, the web application does not need to know each and every implementation of, uh, of the device. So devices, browsers and web apps can work uh, together. And this indeed drives some mass adoption in this uh, uh, sector. So there are quite a few 2FA vendors supporting it, uh, browsers, leading browsers such as Chrome uh, and others, and web apps that uh, support that, for example, uh, Facebook. And we'll see a demo of it in the end. So it's already working. And just a small uh, dive into the technical details and Alex will elaborate on that more. Uh, what happened behind the scenes? User generates a key pair, private and public with the U2F device. A user registered their public key with the service uh, using the interfaces supplied by U2F and web authentication. And when authenticating the server uh, uh, sends a string uh, for, the, uh, for the client to sign, it's called challenge. Uh, the client signs, the, signs that uh, challenge using the U2F device and supplied to the website, then the website can uh, validate and verify this uh, signature using the previously registered public key. Uh, so what it means, we can uh, derive already a requirement based on this uh, high level uh, uh, description of uh, two-factor uh, solution. Uh, the requirements are as follows. The, device, the solution needs to generate a key pair, private and public, send a message with a private key, understand the protocol to generate messages and to validate messages to be signed, keep the private key secured, as it enables full control. This is security uh, requirement because if the attacker obtains the key, now they have the same capability as the original owner. And which puts us back in the situation where it password, stealing key is like stealing a password. So, and if, when that happened, two factors becomes effectively one and we are uh, in one of the original problems we set out to solve. Uh, but uh, so we're saying uh, one of the way uh, we're securing uh, 2FA is by using hardware. And we, we, we usually we say hardware is more secure than software. But uh, in fact, when we look into the details, it's not so true. It's true that confidentiality is better with hardware uh, than in software uh, because Hardware better protects uh, their secrets. It is, it's harder to extract, for attacker to extract the secret from hardware and then from software. Uh, but not impossible as the uh, links there show, there are physical attacks, vulnerabilities, et cetera, that still en enable attackers to attack uh, even hardware uh, 2FA implementation. So when we say, usually say hardware, uh, is better than is more secure than software. We mean confidentiality. However, there's a very important aspect of security, which is availability. And in that sense, software is much better than hardware because backing up keys in software is very easy. But what happens when you lose your hardware token? If you don't remember where you put it, or someone stole it, or it just got broken, what do you do now? No easy solution for that. And Additionally, besides security, there's a very important aspect of user experience. When some would argue it's even much more important than security. And in this aspect software is much better than hardware because user experience, people don't want yet another thing in their pocket. They don't want hard, more hardware in their pocket. And for example, how do you share an account with multiple people with the hardware, especially in a current uh, scenario of uh, COVID-19 and working from home? Uh, let's say two people had shared an uh, account, uh, but when they were in the office, it was very easy maybe to move the physical key between them, but now they are uh, miles apart. How that happened? Additionally, there's the cost issue. 
hardware cost is much more than the zero cost of password uh, or software. And the experience of replacing something that you used to get for free, and now you have to pay something to buy this uh, token, it's very bad experience for user. As a result, it should come as no surprise, uh, for example, that Google finds that only 10% of uh, Gmail users are unable to factor authentication. Why is that? Because the user experience is not as good. And to solve that, we will first uh, uh, talk about the insight we had that cryptocurrency wallet has pr pretty much the same requirement as 2FA. So let's recall, let's see what uh, cryptocurrency wallet uh, needs to do. Uh, the requirements are very much the same. Uh, the wallet needs to generate a key pair, private and public keys, sign a message with the private key, understand the protocol to generate messages or validate messages to be signed and keep the, the private key secure. And this insight, uh, we cannot claim uh, we first thought about it. And for example, thought, uh, important thought, leadership, thought leader in the field of uh, cryptocurrency, Balaji, already said in 2019, the password management, private key management, and crypto wallet will eventually converge. And the uh, reason behind it that they are performing pretty much the same uh, tasks. And hopefully by now you are convinced with that. So how did we solve these very same issues uh, with Zengo and what makes Zengo uh, crypto Zen is insecure? Well, the most important building block for that was threshold signatures. Threshold signatures is a cutting edge uh, cryptography research in the academia. And using threshold signatures, private key becomes distributed and no longer a single point of failure. What it means to be distributed? It means that there are back and forth messages uh, exchanged between the different parties. And key generation uh, now becomes each party creates a share, which is not half of the key. And to sign, they do some kind of uh, message exchanges or a ping pong dance, as we like to call it. And together, they are able to, to sign in a way that they are not, of course, revealing uh, their secret information to each other, just exchanging messages. And in the end, the signatures looks the same as the one that would have been created with non-distributed monolithic protocol. Uh, so when one becomes two, when a single private key becomes two shared, it's harder for the attacker to steal uh, because they now need to compromise two different platforms in the same time. And also easier to back up because each share is meaningless by itself. Uh, and as a result, in the past, you had uh, a problem uh, to back up because it was just a private key. If you back it up, you create more attack surface for attacker to steal from the backup. But now that you're backing up shares that each of them is meaningless on its own, then it's far more easy uh, to securely back them up. And that's exactly what we do in Zengo in our wallet app available in app stores. Uh, we are the first killer's wallet, no more single uh, private key, but a distributed private key. Uh, the security of it, the confidentiality is realized using two party threshold signatures with Zengo server is one party and Zengo app on the user device is the other party. And each share is stored in a secure manner. For example, we utilize the device uh, specific hardware security models, for example, a secure enclave in uh, iOS iPhone. And availability, each party, uh, the app, uh, the coder is uh, backing up, making sure the share is backed up to the cloud solution uh, of the user and the cloud solution of the server. And as we said, one of the most important aspects is the user experience. And the user experience that we found out that people love is mobile app because mobile devices are already in the pockets of customers. And so no additional uh, hardware in the pocket and also no additional cost, just download it from uh, the app store for free. And how all this goodness is applied to U2F, uh, Alex will explain. Great, so uh, thank you, Tal. 
And uh, now I'll take you on a journey of how we implement uh, U2F with our uh, threshold signatures. Uh, so uh, again, a reminder of how the U2F protocol flow works in general. So there are three parties involved in the protocol, uh, the website or the service that the user wants to, to connect to, uh, the browser that, that it uses to, to connect to the service and the USB key or security key that's doing the, the secure authentication. <clears throat> so first of all, there is a, a key generation process, a registration process where they all agree on a set of uh, public and private keys that the user then uh, needs to use again in order to authenticate. Uh, I won't uh, get into the registration process itself, but once it is uh, complete and the public key is established, now the user wants to connect and use the service. Uh, the website sends a challenge to the browser. Uh, the browser uh, augments the data with uh, the URL and uh, there is also a nonce there. Uh, and this also helps us uh, prevent the uh, men in the middle attack and phishing attacks uh, from um, uh, by, by adding this, uh, this information. Uh, the USB, this uh, information is uh, moved to the past of the USB key, which is doing uh, the signing. Uh, once the, the message is signed, it is forwarded back to, to the browser and to the service. And if the service indeed uh, sees that the signature matches the public key that uh, was agreed upon, then uh, authentication is complete and the user can uh, log in and use the service. So uh, in order for us to, to do this uh, via threshold signatures, uh, the, first, the first step was to replace this uh, USB key with some software daemon. So there is nothing uh, magical or special about uh, doing this uh, via USB. There are uh, benefits and trade-offs as Tal uh, touched upon, uh, but eventually it's doing a uh, public key cryptography. Uh, so the first step was to uh, run a service on the, users, on the end user's device that will uh, do the signing. Now, this of course is not perfect because if uh, the service is uh, running on the device itself, and you already have a auto autofill for your passwords. So there is a, not much to do uh, for an attacker that's able to, to steal your, your device. And uh, it's, a, it's a problem for security. So the ultimate goal is to replace that uh, with the Zengo app, which will communicate with the Zengo server and together will generate uh, the signature required. And we will now see exactly how this happens. So uh, one of the main uh, building blocks that we use to make uh, this possible is our uh, open source uh, Gotham City library. Uh, so this is part of our uh, stack of, uh, of uh, libraries that we use in our product. Uh, Gotham City is, uh, has a server side and a client side and uh, where the server is uh, operated by, by us, by Zengo or uh, uh, an operator and uh, the client side is on the end user's device. Uh, the server side offers a RESTful API through which uh, the client can uh, request, uh, make requests and together they do the key generation and signing uh, in order to generate uh, keys and signatures. Uh, now currently uh, Gotham City supported the ECDSA and EDDSA curves these are uh, commonly used in um, many cryptocurrencies and blockchains. And specifically because uh, U2F uh, requires a slightly different uh, signature scheme, namely the P256 curve, we uh, added that, uh, namely Oded added that for this uh, project specifically to make this work. Uh, now a little bit on uh, Gotham uh, under the hood. So we said there is a client side and the server side. Uh, again, the client side uh, and, and together they, they keep their uh, key shares. Uh, the client side keeps the key share on, for example, a secure enclave or on the keychain or some, uh, some secure device. On the server side, uh, the key share is kept, uh, for example, in an encrypted, encrypted database. And it is important to note here that uh, the, the server side is not a signing service. It's not that the client is requesting 
uh, the service just do the signing for me. They need to work in tandem. They need to work together in order to both uh, generate the key and uh, create this, the signature in this uh, ping pong dance. Uh, now, uh, this uh, process of, uh, uh, as, we, as we have seen, so, so okay, so U2F is, uh, is public cryptography. And uh, this is something we're familiar with. We have a wide variety of blockchains, each with, with their own quirks and features of uh, what do you need to sign, how do you need to sign, the curves that you need to use in order to complete this. So this is the process that we are uh, accustomed to. So the, the general re recipe of how you take a, a public uh, cryptography service and turn it into a threshold uh, signature scheme uh, with Gotham in our, in our stack is the following. We start with some uh, single party implementation, uh, make sure that, that it all works and, uh, and basically replace all the cryptography with, uh, with our crypto cryptography. So for example, identifying uh, where key generation uh, happens, what kind of curve is uh, required, et cetera. Uh, then identifying what kind of data needs to be signed, uh, what uh, needs to be sent uh, back and forth, and uh, finally replacing the calls instead of to uh, the single party signer or a USB key with uh, calls to Gotham. And uh, the similar process was applied here. So we started off with a Rust U2F, which is an open source uh, library, uh, which uh, offers uh, the U2F implementation on uh, the end user's device. It uh, simulates a, a USB key, and uh, this is how we, uh, this is where we started from. Uh, the library is implemented in Rust, uh, such uh, just like the rest of our software stack, which uh, made it relatively easy to do a native integration uh, with our stack and with the added benefits of uh, Rust as a secure language for uh, cryptography uh, and, uh, and security. Uh, the implementation worked on, uh, on Linux uh, via USB, again, simulating a USB, and uh, the, uh, the proof of concept that we'll show here uh, works on a uh, Fedora, um, and uh, we're going to see that in the demo soon. So uh, again, basically we took that and replaced all the cryptography with ours. So uh, find, uh, replacing key generation and signing with Gotham with the 256 curve that we added. Uh, this, uh, this library as well as the rest of our stack is uh, available and open source. You're more than welcome to, to go and try it out and see that it uh, indeed works. Now a little precursor to the to the demo that we'll now see. So uh, U2F is supported across a variety of, uh, of services and, and websites. Uh, dear to our heart, uh, our uh, blockchain uh, uh, exchanges and the Coinbase is one of the more popular ones. Uh, we'll uh, see how you how we do registration with uh, with U2F and then. Uh, authenticating and uh, logging back in and finally see what happens after we stop the services and restart them again. So now for the demo. I'll uh, pause the demo here for a second and uh, explain what we are seeing. So on the left, there is a Coinbase where we already created an account, uh, registered with a username and password. And now we are trying to register a second factor uh, for extra security. Uh, on the upper uh, right uh, is the Gotham client. This is what's running on the end user's device. And on the bottom right is Gotham server, which of course can uh, run remotely uh, and uh, receive requests from the client uh, to, create, uh, to create keys. Now, our user will uh, begin the registration process. We'll start the services. The user will uh, be prompted to do some uh, live, to enter some live signal, which is this uh, approve uh, request, just like uh, tapping on the USB key. And as you can see, messages begin to run between uh, the server and the client. Uh, several messages, it is, a, it is a, a dynamic protocol to create the signatures. And once it is complete, the key shares are stored on each 
on each uh, part. Uh, right. Next, we'll uh, log out and uh, try to try to uh, log back in. Again, the user is prompted to give some uh, liveness signal, and once they do, messages are exchanged between the server and the client. And success: uh, the user is successfully logged in. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So just to uh, to show you that there is no uh, trickery involved, uh, we'll uh, log back out, uh, stop stop the the server and the, and the client, and attempt to uh, log back in. Uh, now, since we haven't registered a USB key, it will be prompted for one, but uh, we will not get the the request from the uh, Gotten client. And only once we restart the service, we will uh, get the message again and we'll be able to log in and just to show you that it works across sessions and across logins, etc. So uh, this is very cool. Uh, and uh, do note that there were no uh, special modifications that were required on the browser side or on Coinbase side for this to work. Uh, the signature that's created is, uh, is indistinguishable. And because we are integrating to it via USB, uh, no special additions were required for us to uh, integrate uh, this uh, U2F service. Now, this is not uh, perfect yet. It works uh, over a VM. Uh, there are more to strive for, and Tal will uh, continue on that and elaborate and sum up. Thank you, Alex. What a great uh, demo. Uh, I just, it's like uh, corn days in, in sports when someone scores a goal and you don't hear the crowd uh, roar. It's like suddenly miss the claps and the hand clapping after a great demo, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so as Alex uh, showed, we already have the main uh, uh, building blocks for uh, implementing uh, U2F using uh, threshold uh, signatures. And the missing part is, of course, browser uh, integration. Uh, Rust U2F, the infrastructure we use, just mimics USB events in, in software. Uh, but there should be a support, uh, better support uh, in, in browsers. So currently, originally, Bluetooth uh, interface was supported, so it would have been easy uh, to do uh, with a mobile app that has Bluetooth support. However, it was removed because problems uh, with that. But we talked to Google guys, and they said uh, Bluetooth would be uh, re-added uh, next year, 2021. So we hope that happens. And oh, we can always fall back to an ex using extension. For example, Krypton, you, you can try it out. It's a software U2F that just add this functionality via a web extension. Uh, and it, but of course, this is just software U2F. It's not a threshold signature. So let's sum up what we learned today. We learned today that uh, U2F or universal second factor is great for the security of authentication. It's certainly an upgrade. However, hardware solutions are not perfect. They have issues on confidentiality, availability, and most importantly, user experience. Uh, we can use the knowledge we learned from crypto wallets that has the same tasks and the same issues and apply this solution uh, to a universal second factor, U2F and 2FA by using threshold signature and get the best of both worlds. So with that, we conclude. This is the way to contact us. And now we'll be taking questions.